Hey guys, Harley Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to continue working on the ability system. I'll do a quick review of what we worked on last time, and then we'll jump right into working on the area of effect ability behavior. Uh, so last time we looked at this cube here, and we really started working on our ranged ability behavior class. So if I zoom in here a little bit, we can see that we kind of uh, filled out the rest of this range class. We looked at creating a coroutine to handle what's going to be happening with this range class. We decided that uh, our range class is really going to determine uh, what we call life distance. Basically, how long in the infinite plane will this spell travel, or this ability, excuse me, travel before it gets turned off, deleted, or whatever we do with it, whatever we decide to do with it. And we decided that we do that using a coroutine, checking our player's start position versus this game object's position, which, uh, if you remember, this spell's going to be attached to some sort of game object eventually. And when we do that, we want to check to say, hey, uh, where's this game object moving? Uh, so once we've done that, that's basically where we finished in the video. Uh, what I'd like to do today is work on another ability behavior, and that ability behavior is going to be the area of effect ability behavior. Uh, and having talked about that, or having decided that we're going to do that, we're going to be looking at a sphere collider today. And this is a sphere collider. <clears throat> it's a big green circle over the, around this cube that I've added just by going to Add Component, Physics, and then Sphere Collider. And the cool thing about this is it allows us to adjust the radius, so the size of how big this sphere collider can get, right? If we want it really big, we can make it really big or really small. Uh, which is pretty cool because that allows us to uh, have a stat, right? We can have a, you can have an ability that allows you to upgrade that ability that allows you to increase its area of uh, effect radius, right? So it starts at one, at level one. Maybe at level five it jumps up to two. Level twenty it jumps up to five. You know, it's up to you. But we can increase the area of effect that it actually changes. Uh, the other thing it allows us to do it allows us to offset it. So if we want to move it on the x direction, we can do that or y. Uh, but we're not going to play with that today. We're going to be looking more at the radius. Uh, but we're going to be using the sphere, the sphere collider to allow us to use collisions or triggers to apply damage to whatever we, whatever character or object or NPC, whatever, right? So let, with having said that, let's go ahead and in our behaviors folder, with, with the subfolder within our ability system, we're going to add a new behavior, and it's a C sharp script, and we're going to call it area of effect. I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. I'm going to hit Control S to save. And let's get rid of Mono Behavior. And we're going to be inheriting from Ability Behaviors. I'm going to delete the Start and Update because we're not going to be using those. And right away, I'm going to jump into the Range class. And I'm going to highlight uh, everything, the Perform Behavior on up. Right. So I'm going to highlight Perform Behavior, that override method we talked about. And then I'm going to highlight the Range, the Constructor, all these private variables. Gonna hit Control C to copy, go back into our area effect, and then Control V to paste. Uh, so we have all this information in here, and we can start working on it and get rid of a few things. We know we don't want any of these private variables. We don't want min distance, distance or max distance, so we can erase those. We can get rid of them in our constructor here. We can change range to area of effect. So I'm just highlighting, copying, and pasting. We can get rid of everything uh, besides the start coroutine in our perform behavior. I'm going to make a comment there. Uh, and then we're going to be looking at getting rid of, uh, or excuse me, changing the name. So we want name to be area of effect. And we'll change the description from a ranged attack to uh, an area of damage. Like that. Uh, we want our start time to be at the end, right? So we want our start time to be on impact. At least that's where I want mine to be. Uh, you could have several. So you could create an area of effect uh, beginning, middle, and end. And they could each be their own separate class. And they each have their own separate type of behavior. Uh, so that's something to think about. But we'll just do one generic one at the end for now. Uh, and we'll make a note. Say, hey, remember, it's on impact. So if this thing goes its entire distance... Uh, then at the end of that distance, this is when we launch it. Or if it hits a rock, then we want this to affect. If we hit an NPC, we want the area effect to take place. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, we don't have anything in our constructor for right now, and that's totally fine. But let's talk about a few variables that we want to add, the few things that we want to manipulate on our area effect. So I talked about having that sphere collider that's going to be our area of effect, our trigger uh, that's going to cause, if something enters that trigger, then we're going to, or detect some sort of collision, then we're going to apply damage. 
Uh, well, we would like to change that radius, right? We talked about doing that. So the way we're going to do that is by adding a float, and we're going to call it area radius, like that. Uh, and this is radius of sphere collider. Uh, and that's, again, that's just the radius that we adjusted in the, in the inspector there. Uh, and you can we can add a get and set for this later. Um, but for now, we'll just leave it private. Uh, the next thing we want to do is do a private float, and this is going to be area, uh, we'll call it actually, excuse me, effect duration. And this is going to be how long the effect lasts, right? So today what I really want to do is work with the timer. We want this effect to last a certain amount of time. And excuse me, this also allows us to have another stat that we can adjust later on, right? With uh, As we level up and as we move on in the game we could have some way to increase the effect duration. Meaning, if this thing lands and you're level one, you have an AOE effect, maybe it only lasts a split second, maybe it lasts two, you know, 20 fifths of a second. Uh, and then as you level up, it, it becomes one second, five seconds, 30 seconds. It's really up to you and what you want for your project, but this allows us to change that. Now, if we have effect duration, we need to add some way to keep track of time. And the way we're gonna do that is by using a stopwatch. Uh, and stopwatch is actually in a different library, so we're going to be doing using at the top here, using system dot uh, diagnostics, and that's going to give us access to the stopwatch class. Uh, so here under our effect duration, we're going to add a private. It's going to be a type stopwatch, and we're going to call it duration uh, duration timer, and we're going to set that equal to a new stopwatch. So we've initialized it right. So here we have our timer. And there's a couple of things we need to talk about. Mainly, you know, how do we start the timer, um, and when do we start the timer? Uh, but first, what we want to do is in our constructor here, we want to add these variables. So area radius. So let's add a float here. Uh, float. We'll call it AR for area radius, and then we'll do another float uh, for effect du duration. So we'll say ED. And in the uh, constructor here, we'll say area radius is going to be equal to AR. And then we'll do effect duration is going to be equal to ed. Okay, so when we create the spell in our editor later, we'll be able to assign these variables right away, uh, and we can add limits in our editor uh, with like math.clamp. We can say, hey, this area radius can only be no less than 0.5, but no greater than 50. You know, we can do we can talk about that later, uh, but we want to set that up in our constructor. But now let's talk about our coroutine. Okay. Our coroutine is where the magic is going to happen. This is where we're going to be controlling what's happening. Let me comment that out again. What's happening with our area of effect. And so let's create it. So again, we'll do a private IE numerator. Oh. Numerator, not numerable. And we're going to call it AOE. Uh, if you guys have a better name, let me know. I can't. I couldn't come up with a better name. So if you have a better name, leave it in the comments below. Make a note. Leave me a message. And hopefully I'll be able to change it. Uh, but we'll do our yield return null. Right, and then we'll highlight it and we'll paste it in here. Let's get rid of our comments and we'll get rid of the check distance. Uh, we're not going to be using start position right now, but it needs to be an argument of the perform behavior because remember, override has to override the same exact virtual method, uh, which we're doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and talk about what do we need to do first. Well, when we start our coroutine, we want to immediately start our timer, right? So in our timer, or excuse me, in our coroutine, let's start the timer. The way we do that is by grabbing duration timer, let's copy that, let's paste it in our coroutine, and we do a period, and then we say start, right? And that starts our timer. And we'll, another, just think of it as it turns on, turns on timer. It's like you hitting a stopwatch, right? You hit the on button to watch your buddy run. Uh, you're, you're, you're timing how long that person runs, right? We're just turning on that start timer, or that, that timer. Uh, so now that we've turned it on, we can use a while loop and we can check to see how far along that timer's gone. We can do a while. Let me do the brackets here, uh, just so we have them up, ready to go. And in the while loop, all we have to check is, is how long our timer's been running. So we'll say duration timer dot elapsed dot total seconds. And we'll see if that's, as long as that's less than and equal to, less than or equal to our duration, our effect duration, then we'll continue to take damage. So we'll say do damage here. And since we're talking about damage, we also need to add a float, right? 
to our uh, constructor up here, and we need we can cache it. It's gonna be a float. And it's gonna be our base damage, uh, base effect damage. Okay, this is also something we can send in our constructor. So we'll uh, paste it down here. We'll send in another float for it. We'll call it base uh, BD base damage. We'll set our, our base effect damage equal to BD, right? Uh, and we'll we'll talk about damage in the next video. Uh, we're gonna work more with our timer and our sphere collider now. But just know that you know this effect is a damage effect. Our range effect wasn't, so now we need to start looking at how we're gonna deal with damage. And as of right now, we just know that we want some number that is our base effect damage. This is what ticks every time what. And we'll talk about that later, uh, but just have that in there for now. So now that we've got our timer running, we know that, hey, when this happens, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be coming in here. We're going to be sitting in this loop. And as soon as we get out of that loop, we want to stop our timer. So we're going to say duration timer dot stop. Uh, and then we can reset it if we want. So you can do a reset. So next time this runs, it resets. Um, that's just... Just to make sure that it's new and refreshed. Um, <clears throat> but we, we'll stop it, we'll reset the timer, and then we'll be able to turn null so the coroutine will finish. It'll kill itself, we'll be done with. Right? Now, that solves our timer and what, how we're going to be doing damage for the most part. Now, the next question is hey, how are we using our sphere collider? You know, we talked about it, we want to have it, we're, we want to affect its radius. Well, how do we do that? Well, a couple ways we can do that. First thing is, we need to check to see if this game object even has a sphere collider, right? So the way we do that is when we call perform behavior, we'll perform a check. We'll say, hey, if this game object, oh, excuse me, if this game object dot uh, get component sphere collider uh, <clears throat> equals null, so if we don't have a sphere collider, what do we need to do? Well, we need to add one. And the way we add one is we're going to say sphere collider where sphere collider sc is going to be equal to this dot game object dot get uh, add component and we're going to be adding the sphere collider to it. Like that. Right? So we're creating a sphere collider called SC, and we're going to add it, we're going to apply it to our game object, which the game object is whatever this is attached to. And then now we can actually affect its, its uh, radius. So we can say SC is equal to, excuse me, SC.radius is going to be equal to our area radius, right? So we've created this sphere, and then we've added it. Now, the question comes now, well, shouldn't we also apply it, uh, should we... <clears throat> apply the sphere collider uh, another way, or the, the radius, you know, if we already have it, if this returns false, if this is false, then we're gonna we're not going to assign a radius. So what we should do is copy the same thing here, like that, we'll paste it up top. So, oops, excuse me, so else, let's cut it, paste it. So if this returns false, it's going to run this. That means we have a collider, so instead of adding the component, we're going to get the component, right? We'll get the component sphere collider, and then we're going to cut this radius out, and we're going to paste it here. So by the time, and that means we can actually get rid of these brackets. We can do that. It means we can also do the uh, other type of... Um, <clears throat> oh, it's going to have... Um, We've already defined it, so we'll do our, the we'll call it new SC. Uh, you, oh, you know what? How about this? We will do we are going to copy that and we'll paste it up top like that. And sorry about this coding. Not, I'm just coding on the whim here. So we'll say SC is equal to that, or we'll do this. So if, now what's the issue? Invalid term. Oh, there's a bracket up here. All right, excuse me. 
So sorry for that confusion. What we've done is we've created a local variable called Sphere Collider, and we've named it as of type Sphere Collider, and we've named it SC. And what we're doing is we're doing a check. We're saying, hey, if this game object, and you could do that one line, uh, that one line if statement that we talked about last time, this one. You do the same thing, but here we'll do it this way. If we have this game, if this game object exists or it's equal to null, excuse me. So if the Sphere Collider does not exist, then we're going to create one. We're going to add one. If it does exist, then we're going to grab it and then we're going to adjust its radius by doing sc.radius and signing the area radius to it. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go ahead and start the coroutine, which is going to jump down here and run AOE. Uh, so let's go into Unity, make sure we don't have any errors. If we do, we'll correct them. It looks like we don't, which is good. Uh, this video is getting about 15 minutes long now, so I'm going to end it here. In the next video, we're going to talk about different ways we can actually apply damage or take away damage from whatever we hit. Uh, so we'll talk about it in the next video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please like and comment on it. Uh, let me know what you think about the ability system so far. If you have a great name for the AOE instead of the AOE name here for our coroutine, let me know that too. And uh, Otherwise, I'll talk to you guys next time.